So if you're moving forward with your woodworking, you might not want to make everything out of plywood and 2x4s from the home center anymore. You might be getting to the stage where you're going to go to the lumber yard or even the sawmill and buy nice, locally sourced hardwood like this. And that's important. It's a big step in your woodworking. Now, boards like this very often come plain on both sides, which is great. It saves you a lot of work. But the edges are usually straight from the saw. They're rough to the touch and they're really wavy, which means you can't take it to most of your woodworking machines because you don't have a good edge to start from. So, I guess you need to buy a jointer, right? Well, maybe not. You know what? This is a quick video. Let's just skip the intro. Jointers are great tools, and I've used them a lot. I'm sure I'll buy one in the future, but I don't have one now because they're expensive, they're noisy, they take up a lot of space, and one way or another, you gotta get them hooked up to the dust collector. The other problem with jointers is that most home game woodworkers can only afford to get a jointer with a six inch table. And this is six inches right here. It's not very much. Most of the boards you're going to buy at a lumber yard are a lot wider than six inches. So you're not going to be face jointing them on your jointer anyway. You're only going to be using it for edges. And if you're only going to be using the jointer for edges, there are much, much easier ways to do it. You don't even need to build a jig. In this video, I'm going to show you how to edge joint boards really perfectly with nothing but your table saw and a jack plane. Get your board in your vise and see if it's short enough to be held stably. This board's too long. So, I'm going to set up this basic two clamp arrangement on the end of my bench, drop my board in, and tighten it up. This is going to give me all the hold I need, and the board is going to be supported by the length of my workbench, so it's not going to flex or move while I'm working on it. Next, you want to get right down by the corner of your board and sight along the edge. This isn't easy to show on camera, but once you do it in person, it'll be really obvious what's going on. You're trying to find any high spots or humps in the board so that you can work them down with the jack plane. And what I can see is that I've got a big high spot that goes about from here to here, and then there's a dip in the middle right here, and then at the end of the board, there's another high spot about 18 inches long right here. So what I want to do is go ahead and work those down. I'll grab my jack plane, set it up for a fairly heavy cut, and go to work just on those problem areas. Then I'll sight down the board again and see if I've made progress. And I definitely have, but those two areas need to come down a little bit more. As I'm working on my problem areas, I'm lengthening the stroke I'm taking with the plane so that each time I take a shaving, it's longer and I'm making longer, flat edges. I'm not trying to joint this edge the way we would if we were doing all hand tool woodworking. And that's why I'm using a jack instead of a jointer plane. I don't need one. I'm just trying to get this surface flat enough that it'll ride against the fence of my table saw. Now the edge of this board is really close to being straight. I've been working on it with the jack plane, slowly taking down the high spots and then sighting down the edge to make sure that I'm not making the problem worse as I'm working on it. So I take a few strokes, I check, then I take a few more strokes. Now when I'm checking to see what kind of progress I'm making, I look down this edge, but that's not the best guide. The best thing to actually do is look at one of the corners where the face and the edge meet. That gives you a really crisp line, and if there's any movement up and down or side to side in that line as you sight along the board, you know that you've still got some work to do. After you've been working on this for a while, it's going to look straight to your eye, and you're not going to know how to progress further to make it even flatter. Luckily, there's a couple things you can do without any fancy equipment. Just getting a regular, kind of cheap hardware store straight edge, like this one, will tell you a lot about the board. This isn't some precision machinist straight edge or anything, but it's more than good enough for what we're doing. Put it in the center of your board and push on either end. If it rocks, that means you've got a hump in the middle of your board. This one doesn't rock, so now I'm going to go like this and look underneath and see if there's light right here or anywhere along the length of the edge. And I do see light, especially in the middle. And that means my board still has a little bit of dip right in the center here. So I'm going to take a little bit more off with the jack plane and then check it again. Now it could be that you don't even own an inexpensive straight edge, and that's fine. There's plenty of other ways to get this done. For instance, if your bench top is relatively flat, you can take your board out of the clamp, 
flip it over and use the bench top as your reference surface. Again, I can't rock it, so I know I don't have a hump in the middle, and I can look underneath, and there's very, very little light underneath. And I know that my bench top isn't perfectly flat, it's got a tiny bit of a dip in the middle, so if I see just a little bit of light down there, I know this board is really close. Now my edge is really close to being straight, and what I'm going to do is just take a couple of very light finishing passes to get it totally smooth the whole way. I'm going to start by backing off the iron on my jack plane and checking it in the front to make sure I'm going to take a very light cut. Then I'm going to run the plane the entire length of the board and see if I can get a continuous shaving. Now what we can see here is that my shaving was pretty good. It's almost an entire full shaving and it's the full width of the board. That's a good sign. It means my board is likely to be very flat and straight. While I'm making these final finishing cuts, I'm also going to change my grip on the plane. Instead of grabbing the knob like this, as I normally would, I'm actually going to reach around and pinch the sole of the plane with my thumb and forefinger. And I'm going to let this knuckle of my index finger ride right against the side of the plane. What I'm doing there is putting a little fence on the plane with my hand, and that's going to keep the center of the plane on the center of the board. I don't want it wandering back and forth because this plane has a cambered blade. It cuts at different depths depending on where you're hitting the iron. So it's really important to keep this in the center so you're getting an even full cut the whole way through your stroke. I might do that light finishing pass two or three times. There's no reason to go crazy here because we don't need perfection. That pass was really good. That's probably as close to a full length, full width shaving as I can possibly expect with my rough jack plane. The edge of my board is about 90 or 95% straight right now, and that's more than good enough for this technique. Now I'm going to bring it over to the table saw, put the jointed edge against the fence, set the saw for a very shallow cut, and run it through. After I've ripped off the rough edge, I'm going to rotate the board around, not flip it. It's really important that whatever face was against the saw before stays against the saw table. That's going to be our reference face, and it can't change if we're going to end up with really parallel edges. So I rotate the board, set the fence in a tiny bit to take another very light cut, and run it through again. This time, I'm taking off the jointed edge that I made with the hand plane. Now during this cut, I'm going to put a little bit of attention into seeing the way the board rides against the fence. I don't want to see any gaps in between the fence and the edge of the board, because that would tell me my previous cut was bad and I didn't get a straight edge. After I've made two good cuts, I'm going to rotate the board one more time and cut it again. This third cut isn't strictly necessary, but I find it gives me really perfect parallel edges when I do it three times. After a couple of trips through the table saw, this board now has two perfectly straight edges. You can see that as I take my engineer square and run it along one edge, the rule stays exactly next to the opposite edge. That means the two edges of this board are perfectly parallel with one another. This piece of wood is thoroughly processed and it's ready for any kind of furniture making or joinery that I want to do it with. Now, what I like about this technique is not only does it work as well as a jointer without any specialized equipment, but it also improves your skills as a woodworker. It teaches you about sighting a line, taking care of problem areas, using hand tools, all sorts of valuable skills. If the only way you know how to straighten an edge is with a jointer, that's fine, but then what are you going to do when the jointer goes down? And take it from me, every machine goes down eventually. Now, I know there's some wise guy in the audience right now who's going to say, but Rex, what are you going to do when you don't have your jack plane? Well, I always have my jack plane because I just carry it around with me everywhere I go. I take it on dates with my wife. <laughs> Before I go, I really need to thank all of my patrons who make this video possible, especially my newest patrons. Philip Hendrickson, Pup Tana, Matthew Liu, and David Bumpus. And if you're interested in getting exclusive content and early access to my videos, go to patreon.com slash rexkruger and check out all the rewards I have there for my patrons. 
And if you're interested in any of the tools that I used in this video, you can look down in the description where I've linked to all of them. You can also read the build article at rexkruger.com. It's got more details and links to the tools and materials that I use. Okay, that is more than enough self-promotion for one video. Thanks so much for watching.